Today, we're going to be looking at Exodus 16, verses 1 through 3. I'll read it now. The whole Israelite community set out from Elam and came to the desert of Sin, which is between Elam and Sinai, on the fifteenth day of the second month after they had come out of Egypt. In the desert, the whole community grumbled against Moses and Aaron. The Israelites said to them, If only we had died by the Lord's hand in Egypt. There we sat around pots of meat and ate all the food we wanted. But you have brought us into this desert to starve this entire assembly to death. What an awesome indictment. The Lord's desire for his people Israel was to rescue them, to restore their identity as a people deeply loved by him, and to bring them to the promised land, that land flowing with milk and honey. But as a people enslaved for 200 years, they had to learn again how to trust the Lord. And it was truly a steep learning curve. He had miraculously delivered them from Pharaoh and the Egyptian army by parting the Red Sea, allowing them to cross over on dry land. Later, he would repair that breach in the sea he had made and the enemy drowned. As awesome as this was, they also had years of slavery and distrust to overcome. They were conditioned by their years of bondage to expect the worst and to be exploited by other people. And they held little hope that their life could be different or better. Their identity as a people chosen by God to be blessed and to be a blessing was shattered and it had to be restored. Even though the Red Sea miracle was only a month before, it wasn't enough to change their mindset or undo all the damage the prior years had done. So when the food became scarce, they grumbled against Moses and Aaron, not only questioning their judgment in leading them into the wilderness, but questioning their motives as well. They said, you brought us into the wilderness to kill us. The Lord, in his mercy, then promised to give manna enough for everyone for every day of that journey. The Lord was training them by his continued provision to trust him daily for what they needed. He wanted his people to see that he was good and trustworthy and cared for them. He wanted to restore their damaged perception of him through his faithful love and provision. He was also training Moses and Aaron to become trustworthy leaders, relying on him for protection, direction, guidance, provision in a wilderness where self-sufficiency proved very inadequate for survival. And isn't that what the Lord's teaching us too? Many of us have had distorted or damaged images of God based on our own past hurtful experiences. But the Lord in his goodness doesn't want to leave us as we are, but he desires to heal us and show us his love by protecting and providing and guiding us to a place where we can experience his love and peace. He wants us to have relationship with him where we come to him with our needs, with our fears, with our desires, our questions, and even our wounds. And as we come to him, we find the healing and we find the wholeness that we so desire. This is a steep learning curve for us too. But the Lord is patient and kind and committed to us all the days of our life. Our promised land is a place of rest and deep satisfaction bought by the sacrifice of Christ for our sins and the indwelling presence of the Spirit who changes us into not only one who is chosen, but has come to know that they're chosen. They come to know that they're loved and they come to know that they're valued and discover that unique calling that God has made them for. During this Lenten season, let's ask the Lord to identify areas in our life of mistrust, distortion, 
and unbelief. Let's invite His Spirit to expose, expose the lies we believe, cleansing and restoring our souls. And as we do, we're invited to believe the truth that God is good and He's good to us. In this believing, we too will experience the fullness the Lord has for us, entering into His promised land of abundance and blessing.